my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today for another one of my vlogs. So I've been really excited about filming this vlog because it's a fabric haul and sewing plans vlog and I've got quite a few new fabrics as well as a couple of new patterns and a couple of knitting projects to share. So there's quite a lot to share in this one. Also it was my birthday in January so I've got a couple of sewing related birthday presents too that I'm really happy with and I wanted to share those too. So I'm really looking forward to talking all about all these new fabrics and patterns. Um, so yeah, um, let's go. Before I start sharing my new fabrics with you, I thought I'd just share with you what I'm wearing today. So it's quite a cold day here in the south of England. Um, it's the weekend and I went for a um, quite a long walk in the woods with my family this morning. So I wanted to wear something cosy. So I'm wearing a toaster sweater and that's this pattern here by Sew House 7. And I'm wearing this version here with the high neck and the raglan sleeves and the kind of oversized cuffs and bottom band and it's a fairly cropped sweater. This is one of my favourite um, winter sweaters. I've made a few versions, some in more pattern fabric and this one's in a, um, it's a fleece back sweatshirting fabric and I got it from Guthrie Garney. It's a, called a Cozy Colours um, fleece back sweatshirt and I think they still have um, some colours of this um, in stock. I don't think the red's in stock anymore but they do have a few other colours in stock. It's lovely because it's got kind of a little fleck to it um, so it's quite pretty and it's quite nice because it's, it's cosy but it's not super thick so if I layer it up with um, a big coat I don't get too hot in it and so yeah it's really nice um the toast sweater and i'll put up a picture of me wearing it just with a pair of ready to wear jeans that's how i look today just so you can see how it looks with a pair of jeans but that's what i'm wearing now let me get started on um the fabrics i've got to share with you so the first two fabrics i've got to share both came from higgs and higgs and i'll pop their website details down below as well as links to these fabrics if i can find them and one's for me and one's for my daughter the one for me it's this lovely, um, it's a um, kind of jersey fabric, but a thick jersey fabric with a quilted design on it um, in a navy colour. And it's quite a nice thick cosy fabric. It's kind of a similar thickness perhaps to like a lightweight fleece back sweatshirting. So similar thickness to this jumper I'm wearing at the moment. Yes, yeah, so it's really cosy. It's 80% um, cotton and 20% polyester, so quite ho high cotton content. And it's got um, some stretch, but it's not the stretchiest fabric ever, I wouldn't say. But yeah, it's really nice and cosy. I like the navy colour, but I love the quilting design on it. That was what I was really attracted to. And I think I know what I'm going to make with this fabric. And what I'd like to make is a version of one of my favourite sweatshirt patterns, the Yara sweatshirt. Um, yes, yeah, so I love the Yara sweatshirt. And um, if you want to hear me talk more about this sweatshirt and the versions I've made, then I would recommend checking out my top five favourite sweatshirt patterns vlog. I've done a series of favourite patterns vlogs and one of them was talking about sweatshirts and this is one of my favourites. Um, it's a great sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen and it comes with lots of different variations. And the version I want to make of this one is actually a variation I haven't made before. I'd quite like to make a version with the um, funnel neck here and the um, split level drop hem here. I haven't made either of those um, features before on a Yara. And I'm quite looking forward to having a go with this fabric because it's quite a simple fabric. I think it'll look nice with the detail of the dropped um, split level hem. And um, I like the idea of a nice cosy, um, a cosy top here because it's going to be a cosy sweatshirt because it's cosy fabric. So that's my plans for this fabric. I just really like the quilting. So I think the plain colour and the quilting together will make quite a nice sweatshirt. So I'm looking forward to sewing with that one. Hopefully it'll, it'll um, cut up nicely and sew up nicely because it looks like it's fairly sturdy and stable. And the second fabric I got from um, Higgs and Higgs was one for my daughter. Um, I actually um, came across the website and because I was searching for fabrics for my daughter because, because she's at home a lot more at the moment with the lockdown. Normally she'd be at school and wearing her uniform five days a week and she'd only really be wearing kind of casual clothes at the weekends. But now she's at home all the time and she's growing quite fast. She's nearly five. Um, she's kind of growing out of some of her smaller dresses and she needs a few more. So I thought I'd see if I could find some fun, fun fabrics to make them because she's all about um, kind of cats and unicorns and owls and kind of cute things like that. And I found this fabric um, on Hids and Higgs and it was just right up her street and she really loves it. And it's um, a jersey because she's a big fan of jersey dresses. I think she finds them more comfy than more restrictive woven dresses. It's a jersey and it's been washed so excuse the crinkles and it's got catacorns on them, so cat unicorns. So it's got kind of a soft grey base and then all these really little cute cat unicorns on rainbows. So yeah, it's really quite girly um, and cute. It's a nice quality jersey, um, feels really nice and soft. Um, yeah, and it's just quite sweet. And she's really pleased with it, which is most important. Um, so what I'm planning to make with this um, for her is a pansy dress. 
It's a pattern I've used quite a few times before. It's made by Poppy and Jazz, the pattern. And I'll show you the pattern. Um, here it is. Um, it's quite a basic jersey dress. It's just got kind of a crew style neckline, um, a little gathered skirt and sleeves, and um, you can make it short sleeved. You can mix and match the colors. I've done a few different versions for my daughter and also my niece. And for my daughter this time, because it's winter, I'm going to make um, a long sleeved version. And then I'm gonna add a ruffle on the bottom because she loves her rush ruffles and swishy dresses and things. So I'll just add that little ruffle to make it a little bit more girly in what she likes. Um, and my plan is to make it a little bit long. So then hopefully um, when it gets to summer, I can kind of maybe cut the sleeves off and she can continue to wear it in summer. But because once she's got a fabric and a dress she likes, she does like to wear it a lot. So yeah, that's this um, Catacorn journey, Jersey from Higgs and Higgs. I'm really looking forward to sewing that one up for her. When I was looking online for some fabrics to make dresses for my daughter, I also came across a fabric website that was new to me, which is a small family run UK business, and that's Eliza Mac Fabrics, and I'll put their website down below in case you fancy having a look at what they have to offer. They had some lovely fabrics on there and a few different things, and I bought two fabrics from there. The first one was another fabric to make a dress for my daughter, another cotton jersey fabric and this time oh try to get the right way up is this lovely um turquoise cotton jersey with quite large scale unicorns on with um lovely purple and pink hair and so my daughter loves the unicorns um she's very into her my little ponies and all that sort of thing at the moment so she was really pleased when she saw this one online and she definitely wanted it again apologies it's a bit crinkle because it's been in the wash um so yeah, it's a lovely cotton jersey with lots of stretch in it and I'm planning to make another pansy dress in this too. So she'll have two new dresses, both with kind of cute animals on. So hopefully um, for my next makes video, I'll be able to get a few photos of her modelling those um, so I can show you how they look. But they're a lot of fun to make. The pansy dress is quite a quick, satisfying sew. And I'm looking forward to being able to sew a couple of things for her. The second fabric I got from Eliza Mac Fabrics was one I hasn't come across before. And when I saw it, I thought that looks really nice. And it's a baby knit. Um, it's in this colour here, which they describe as ecru, um, which I would say is kind of um, kind of it's quite a white colour. It's, it's not got a lot of cream in it. It's quite like a cool colour. But it's 100% cotton, and it's a knitted fabric. I'll see if I can show you the texture. So it's got stretch from the knitted texture, but you can really see the knit and the pearl on the fabric. Um, so it's a bit of a thicker knit than you'd get on a cotton jersey, but not super chunky. Um, so it's a lovely fabric. It's a little bit, it's a little bit drapey. Um, it's really hard to show, and the camera doesn't really like it. But it's a really nice kind of soft white colour. Um, and yes, yeah, so I haven't seen lots of kind of knitted, um, knitted style fabrics. But it's a little bit like you might um, have on a shop bought cardigan. So yeah, it's more of a knit than a jersey. Um, a kind of more of a kind of sweater knit type thing than a jersey. It's kind of, it's not super thick, it's fairly lightweight. Um, and what I wanted to make with it was a cardigan. I thought that would go really nice with a lot of my like, navy dresses and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to having a go with it and seeing how it sews and I'll let you know. They had, um, on their website, their Liza Mac had this color and also a mustard color, which is lovely too. But I thought this color would work better with a lot of my clothes I have. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Um, what to say about it? Oh, what I have planned for it. <laughs> So I really would like to make a cardigan using this fabric. And I've got two options for patterns I think I'd like to try. I don't have either of those patterns at the moment, but I'll put up some details of them. The first one is the Marlowe sweater by True Bias, which is quite a new pattern. And it comes in a shorter length and a longer length. And it's quite a relaxed kind of loose fit cardigan. Um, and it's designed to be made in stretch fabrics or in woven fabrics. You can use either for the main um, sleeves and body of the cardigan, as long as you use a fabric with at least 20% stretch for the band. And this fabric's um, stretchy enough for that, so it would work to make the whole cardigan in it. Um, but it's kind of a loose fit cardigan, quite slouchy and relaxed. Um, the other option is the Juniper cardigan by Jennifer Lauren which is more of a fitted cardigan. And again, I'll put up a picture so you can see how it looks. And I probably would like to make the cropped version, but it's a little bit more of a fitted cardigan with some pretty details. It's got an interesting shoulder detail here where the fabric sort of comes across the shoulder. Um, a V-neck, um, like the Marlowe card, like the Marlowe sweater, but a little bit, yeah, a little bit more fitted. I'm not sure which one I want to make. I need to have a little bit more read up on each of the patterns. Let me know if you think one would be better than the other. I'm kind of swaying maybe towards the Juniper cardigan because I think that's designed for slightly lighter weight fabrics. And this fabric does have a bit of a drape to it. So I think it might look better 
with that style of cardigan. I think with a looser, maybe the looser style of the Marlowe sweater might lend itself better to a slightly thicker fabric, a slightly chunkier fabric with a bit more structure. So I'm thinking they're doing it for cardigan, but let me know what you think. I'm really excited to um, give it a go sewing with this sweater in it. I'll be interested to see when I cut it, how it how it is, whether it whether it's like a classic jersey and doesn't fray, whether it does fray. I really don't know how it's gonna sew up, so. Yeah, I'll report back. Um, it is lovely though, and something a bit different. And I like that it's 100% cotton a lot. The next fabric I bought this month was from another online fabric shop that was new to me, and that's Beyond the Pink Door. And they're a, um, a fairly new um, online fabric business based in Ireland, and I, think I believe they're run by a mother and a daughter. And um, I've, I follow them on Instagram, and I've seen some lovely fabrics going by. And um, then I saw one particular fabric go by a couple of weeks ago and I thought, oh, I, ha I have to have it. <laughs> so I got that one. And it's this here. It is a um, cotton um, sweatshirt with a fleecy back. I'll show you the fleecy back. Um, yeah, really nice and cosy. In this really cool grid print. And I'd seen this fabric go by a few times before um, in this grid print in different colours. I believe there's a mustard colourway. I might have seen a red and a navy possibly. Um, and I thought, thought really liked it and I thought it was really lovely. And when I saw this um, pinky colour went by, I don't know why, it really appealed to me. I don't usually wear a lot of pink, um, but I just really like the colour of this one. And I thought it would make a lovely sweater. So I snapped it up. Um, so it came from Ireland um, and it was quite cute because they sent with it a little um, paper bag with a little um, tea sachet in. So that was nice too and a little extra touch. Um, but yeah, I just really like it. It's a really nice um, quality um, cotton sweatshirt. It's, it's, nice and, it's nice and thick, but not too thick. And I just thought it'd be lovely um, for a bit of an interesting sweater. Um, and so for this one, I'm planning to use, um, yeah, one of my favourite patterns again. I'm planning to use the Yara again. And I think I'd like to make just quite a simple sweatshirt because it's quite a bold um, print. I just want to make a fairly basic um, one, um, just with the drop sleeves, fairly loose fit, quite relaxed, just to wear with a pair of jeans. I think that'll look really nice. I just really like the print and the colour and it's different to anything I have in my wardrobe, this colour. So I'm looking forward to sewing that one up um, and making sure I get some good wear out of it before um, winter fades away and spring arrives. Um, but yeah, so that was from Beyond the Pink Door, um, this lovely fleecy backed cotton sweatshirting fabric. And then I made a couple of purchases from Minerva. The first fabric that I got from Minerva was actually one for my son. And I was really pleased to be able to get a fabric to make something for him because um, generally I struggled to find fabrics that I think he might and might appeal to him really. Um, my daughter's a lot easier because there are a lot there are more fabrics with unicorns and cute animals on. Um, so yeah, I do struggle finding fabric suitable for my son that he'll like. But um, I, I subscribed to Minerva's newsletter, and when I saw this fabric come through, I thought that is right up his street. And um, basically, Minerva released a small range of cotton jerseys that feature Where's Wally pictures on them. And my son loves Where's Wally, he's, um, yeah, he's a big fan of those books. And so they had about five designs, I think, and I'll put a link down below so you can, um, in case you wanna have a look and see what the designs are. And so I showed them to my son, he loved them and said, yes, please, and he chose this design here. It's a Where's Wally print as on cotton jersey, and it's a Where's Wally in Giant Land. And my son's got a book with this one in, so he could have remembered the board game immediately, and I was like, oh, that's really cool. Um, so I was really pleased to be able to get it for him. So it's a nice quality um, cotton jersey, and I'm really looking forward to turning this into a t-shirt for him. Um, and um, I didn't actually have a kind of sort of classic t-shirt pattern that I thought would be suitable. So I actually put out a little ask on Instagram to say could people recommend a pattern that would be good for just a boy's basic t-shirt. And had loads of really great recommendations. And the pattern I went for, which is a new pattern for me this month, is this one here. Um, it's by DIBY Club. I think that stands for Do It Better Yourself Club. I may be wrong. And this is one here. It's the um, ABB tea, which stands for the Kids Anything But Basic tea, And it's a free pattern, which is I think is great. Um, it's designed for ages, um, what is this? it includes 12 sizes, from age 18 months to 12, so a really big range. And it's just a really basic, um, straightforward t-shirt and with a crew neck, and there's also an op option to add a pocket, and you can make a standard fit or a slim fit version. And the instructions are really comprehensive. There's loads of information about how to lengthen the t-shirt, how to adjust it this way and that, how to measure your child. So it's really um, loads of information for a free pattern. So I thought since it's free, I'll give it a go and see how it sews up. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a go for my son. I'm really pleased to be able to make something for him. So I'm looking forward to showing you um, hopefully a few pictures of him modeling that once that one's done. And I made one other purchase from Minerva. Um, now, if you see my recent videos, you'll know I did a collaboration with The Baker That Sews, and we both made a version of this pattern here. 
the Nina Lee Bakerloo blouse and dress. Um, it's a lovely pattern, it was released just before Christmas and it's got some wonderful details, um, particularly the oversized collar with a frill around the edge and these kind of balloon sleeves with a ruff at the bottom. And um, I enjoy making my version so much that I wanted to make another one. And so I'd like to, I'm going to have a go with the dress version here. And I wanted to do something quite different from my first version. And um, so I decided to get this fabric here. Um, and it is a baby cord fabric in this lovely um, royal blue colour. Actually, the website didn't show it as this brighter blue, so when I came, I was like, oh, that is quite bright. Um, it's, I think it's a lovely blue colour, really pretty. It's quite a fine baby cord fabric, and I'll link it um, down below to Minerva. See, so yeah, it's quite it's quite a fine baby cord fabric. It's not, it's kind of, um, it's got a little bit of drape, and it's fairly lightweight, so you wouldn't necessarily want to use it to make a pinafore or a more structured skirt. That wouldn't work. But I hope it'll work well for a dress. Um, and I hope it'll work well for the Bakerloo and because it's quite lightweight, um, the sleeves won't be too um, sort of uh, rigid or anything. So yeah, it's a lovely baby cord in this blue colour. And I'm planning to add some sort of little um, contrasting frill or ruffle around the collar. And I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. I think it'll make a really cute dress. Um, and I do really like the colour. I like this colour on me. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying that one out. I really enjoyed sewing the Bakerloo pattern first time round. So I'm looking forward to trying it again. Um, so yeah, watch this space for that one. I can't wait to get started on that one actually. So as well as those fabrics, I've also got a couple of other new patterns to share with you. And these are actually patterns I won in a competition before Christmas. Um, uh, before Christmas on Instagram, there were quite a few competitions being run to sort of spread the festive sewing cheer, I guess. And I think I entered into a couple of competitions and, and I was really pleased to win um, a couple of patterns. And I got these from Pattern Pages magazine. Um, and Pattern Pages magazine is a bi-monthly um, online digital magazine which talks all about sewing and patterns and fashion and that sort of thing. And they were running a giveaway where they were giving away patterns. Um, and yeah, I was really pleased to win. And the reason I'm only just showing them now is there was a bit of a mix up with my address and they ended up getting posted to the wrong place and it took a while to get back to me. So, but they're with me now. Um, so I thought I'd share them with you because they're new patterns to me and I hadn't come across them before. The first pattern that I received in the Pattern Pages giveaway was um, this pattern here, which is the Burnside Bibs by Soho 7. So I'm already familiar with the Soho 7 Pattern Company because I've made the toaster sweater, but that's the only pattern of theirs I've made to date, so it was quite nice to receive another one of their patterns. It's not one I probably would have bought for myself, because I don't usually go for kind of overalls, and I'm not generally a trouser wear other than jeans generally either. But um, I've seen a few versions of this on Instagram and I do like the look of it. So it's a kind of, um, yeah, it's an overall style pattern with two variations. There's two different type bib front, one with this sort of, um, kind of a curved front and one with a more standard bib front and then there's a more fitted pant and a looser pant um, and they have a um, the first pair has an invisible side zipper and the second pair does not have a closure to sew because it fits over your hips because it's a bit looser fitting um, and so yeah it's one I think maybe I'll consider making towards summer maybe in a lightweight fabric so I could wear it in a similar way to the model with a little t-shirt underneath um, it recommends um, for a kind of casual look to use, you could use some more sturdy fabrics like denim or stiff linen, but you could also go for a lighter and more drapier fabrics for a more flowy version, like a tensile or a linen or a silk. So I'm not really sure um, what sort of fabric I'd go for for this one. I think I need to have a bit more of a think about it and whether I do want to go ahead and make this pattern. But I'd be interested to know if you've made it and how you found it and what kind of fabric you made it in. I'm not too familiar with it yet so I definitely need to have a bit more of a read but yeah that looks like a lovely pattern and definitely one I'm interested in um, yeah researching a bit more and the second pattern is from pattern company I'm not familiar with actually which is Liesl & Co and it's the um, gelato blouse and dress and this looks like a really versatile pattern because the actual um, two um, variations you get the blouse and dress are really quite different so the blouse um, has a little kind of peplum feature here and little kind of ruffle sleeves um, it has bust darts, a scoop neck, um, and a button placket at the back too. Um, you can see it there. And the dress is kind of like an A-line sort of shift dress. Um, and it's got this unusual pocket feature, um, which is they're called double welt angled front pockets. So that sounds like they might be quite interesting and a bit of a challenge to sew. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm quite interest interested to give that one a go. As I said, it's totally unfamiliar to me. I think I'll be having a little look on Instagram for some inspiration and seeing other people's versions because I don't know it at all. But I do like how the version's very different and have some interesting features like the peplum and the welt pockets.
So those are the two patterns I received. So that was quite exciting to win. So thank you very much, Pattern Pages magazine. It's nice sometimes, I think, to, um, to consider a pattern that you wouldn't normally have found or gone for yourself. It might push me a little bit out of my comfort zone. I also got a couple of sewing related um, birthday um, presents that I was um, really excited about. The first one is one I've been eyeing up for a while that I kind of hinted to my husband a few times I'd like. And it's this little sewing tray. Um, it's a melamine sewing tray and it's made by a company called Pop Popkins and they are on Etsy and I'll put a link down below to them. But they make um, all sorts of different um, trays and other little cute um, gifts items. But yeah, the, the, I saw these sewing trays. I think it was um, Harriet at Sew Me Sunshine on Instagram had used hers and they're kind of designed um, to use when you're sewing so you can put all the little bits and bobs you're using on there. So I often use a um, knitting needle to tuck in the ends of my overlocking thread and I often put that needle down and lose it and spend ages searching for it. So I'm really looking forward to having a little place I collect so my needle and my unpicker and all those bits I often reach for when I'm sewing. When I'm sewing it has been in one place so they don't get lost. Um, so yeah it's just quite cute. My daughter chose the colour pink, I quite like the pink. Um, but yeah, I just think it'll be quite useful to have by my side when I'm sewing. Just a little bit of fun too. But that's a Popkins um, tray and it's really quite sturdy actually. So it feels really nice quality. And I think you can get them personalised too um, with your name, which I think is quite nice too and lovely gift idea. So that was my Popkins tray. The other thing I got is something I asked my husband for, which took him quite a while to find. Um, and it's this Gutemann, um thread um, shade card. And it contains all the different colours of their polyester thread. I'll show you inside. Um, as you can see, there's loads of them in here. Um, and what I found during the lockdown is, um, I used to always go to my local um, wool shop, which had a large Gutemann thread selection, to be able to match threads to the fabric I was going to sew with. But with them being closed during the lockdown, I really struggled to find threads and matches online. Um, and I've had to guess a few times or just use something that wasn't quite right. Um, and this is really cool, this tool, because you can get the threads out like this and they all come out in the individual um, little um, um, sort of little cards. And then you can pop on the fabric so you can check what thread match you need so you can buy it online. So yeah, I was so excited when this arrived. I think my husband ended up buying it from America because it was really hard to find. And it took ages to get here, so I think it was due to get here for Christmas, but it didn't arrive, and it luckily arrived in time for my birthday. I think it might have arrived actually on the day. <laughs> um, but yes, it's got all these different colours on there for each different um, thing, so I think it'll be really useful to be able to match them. So that was quite exciting um, presents, and I, I think I'll be using this for years and years to come. It's so useful, so um, I was really, really pleased with that one. Um, then, um, that's all my sewing things to share, but I also got a couple of knitting projects I wanted to share too. So my first new knitting project I wanted to share was actually also a birthday present. I got this from my mum, I asked her for it. Um, and it is a Wool and McGann knitting kit. Um, here it is, um, and it comes in this cute little brown paper um, package. And it is for the saltwater sweater. And this is a picture of the saltwater sweater on the front here. It's this um, kind of lovely, um, kind of summery sweater with this really pretty um, knitting stitch on it. And this is actually one of my um, Make Nine um, plans. Um, I'll put a link up above to my Make Nine um, plans vlog in case you fancy checking out nine patterns I really want to sew this year. But this is one of them, the Wool and the Gang saltwater sweater. Um, so I'm really looking forward to getting started. I've never had a Wool and the Gang kit before, so it's quite exciting. And I decided to go for um, this colour for my kit, which is a pink. Um, what's it called? Hot pink, it's called. So it's quite a bright summery pink colour. I thought it was quite fun. Um, and this wool is 100% cotton, so it's a bit different to what I've used before. I usually knit it with acrylic. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to giving it a go. It's quite a fine wool as well. Um, so I can't wait to get started. I looked on the website and it said this takes uh, 30 plus hours to knit, so it's going to be quite a meaty project. But I quite like the idea of getting stuck into that. I do like having some knitting on the go. So that's a saltwater sweater by Wool and the Gang. I'm really looking forward to giving it a go and I'll let you know how I get on knitting that one. The other knitting project is actually um, for somebody else. It's for my husband. Um, I haven't knitted a great deal um, for my husband, but um, he needs a new winter hat. His old one had got very um, tatty and just had stretched out of shape and that sort of thing. So I had a look online and found a couple of men's hat patterns and he chose one he liked. And this is the pattern he chose. It is, um, 
it is a the, um, Caron men's basic hat and scarf set. So here's the picture so you can see. It's quite a sort of um, simple um, knitted hat with a ribbed cuff bit that turns up and the rest of it is just in stocking stitch. So it's quite, it should be quite a straightforward knit. You can knit a scarf too, but he doesn't really want one of those. He just wants the hat. Um, it's a free pattern. I downloaded it from Lovecraft and I'll include a link down below to the pattern in case you're interested. So it's free, it's pretty good. Um, and it requires just one ball of wool and I've, I'm using this Stylecraft Aran wool. Um, the pattern recommends um, Karen Simply Soft Aran wool, but I couldn't, we couldn't find a colour of that my husband liked. And I had a look and this is um, the same sort of weight type wool. And this is the sort of colour he wanted, this sort of dark grey kind of granite colour. So um, I'm looking forward to knitting that for him. Um, I like knitting a hat, it's quite a straightforward one. I think this one is knitted flat and then you sew up the back, so rather than being knitted on the round, which is how I've knitted my last couple of hats, but that should be fine. It should be quite a straightforward project and it'll be nice to knit something for him and it should be quite a quick one too, I think. So that's my um, last, um, yeah, my last thing to share with you actually. So I hope you enjoyed hearing about my fabrics and my new patterns and my knitting plans too. I can't wait to get started on all of them and I look forward to sharing them with you in due course. If you enjoyed hearing about my plans and my fabrics, I'd love it if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, then please do um, consider subscribing and pressing the bell notification for my future vlogs. I've got a few um, lines up. I'm trying to squeeze them in um, around homeschooling. I'm generally shooting them at the weekend while my husband has the kids, so I can kind of still keep them going because I do really enjoy doing them. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.